Good afternoon. I'll try to cover the, some of the issues being raised in sort of previous presentations. So I'll try to pick it up as I go along, but by all means, please interrupt me in the process because I sort of, so many sort of questions being picked up. I'm not entirely sure where to start at the moment, but I'll just get on with what I wanted to say and then cover the questions at the end, I suppose. So first of all, um, Pleased to say that the user group is growing. We've got a number of new trusts that just joined the group. Some of them are in the room. I recognize Stuart. I see a few more people that just came on board. So we are now very close to 100, uh, we're hoping to be 100 by the end of the year. So it's important that presumably what we're doing sort of serves the purpose and more trusts are interested in participating in this work. So the release 14, which has just been published, that's the release that you've got on your disks, includes overall, we'll mention that additional nine trusts have submitted information, includes data from 22 members for what is called cost mapping, or we call it functional benchmarking. We're basically using different terminology to describe the same thing. So overall, on the disk that you've picked up, there is information from 22 organizations that covers the functional benchmarking. The information for mental health benchmarking has been updated. Number of mental health users are in the room, so that's been published. And um, obviously, from our point of view, what's really, really important for us is to make sure that we get the feedback sort of as quickly as possible. So you've got the new version, you've got the new disk. I would really, really appreciate it if you sort of install the system, have a look at it, see what we've done, and give us the feedback. Because obviously, the quicker we get the information from you, the better we can develop it, and the more we can provide as a, sort of, as a service from us. The disk includes a clinical dashboard. It's a sort of simplified version of the software. It originally was designed to be used by clinical users. It was designed specifically to be published for clinicians, but proved to be very, very effective for the finance users. So again, it's included on the disk. Please have a look at it. It's designed to work on the iPad. It can run on the PC, but it's designed to work on the iPad. Have a look, see what the functionality looks like. Again, any feedback will be greatly appreciated if you believe we are on the right track or not. That's the view of the clinical dashboard. You've noticed that they're specifically designed to sort of to present the information without too many tabs, too many options, too many sort of buttons. So the idea is it's literally here is the selection you've made, here is the main set of analysis. So you can see the lens of stay comparison, you can see theater time, you can see main cost elements, you can see the sort of the general view. So the idea is to try to make something very, very simple and very, very straightforward to answer, which clinical users appreciate. And as I said, from our point of view, Please give it a shot, see what it looks like, and give us the feedback, because obviously we are developing something for you. We need to know whether it is or it isn't useful. Um, Jeremy has mentioned, or a number of people has mentioned in passing, I have to say in a good way and a bad way, I'm looking at Carl, uh, the work that's done by the Lord Carter team and the colleagues. Uh, what we've done, please bear in mind that I'll, I'll sort of, I'll qualify this remark in a minute. What we've done is we've reproduced the information that's produced by the Lord Carter team as a separate dashboard in our benchmarking system. So when you open the new version of the version 14 of the benchmarking, you will find a dashboard which is called Carter Review. What it does, it applies the same calculation that the Lord Carter team has applied to the reference costing information to the PLEX information and reproduces the same analysis, but with a much obviously deeper level of drill down because reference cost only takes you that far, that takes you all the way down to episode, so you can drill a lot. However, please bear in mind, I can't emphasize it enough because I had a conversations with a number of users on this subject. Lord Carter report is based on reference costing data. This is based on PLEX data. As much as we would love for the two to be the same, they are not. So while we are applying the same method, we are applying it to a different data set. So the principle is the same, the approach is the same, the idea is the same, the result isn't always the same because we're using different methods in allocating cost in two different uh, models. Obviously, Winston did pick up on the subject that gradually it will disappear, I can only pray and hope, but at this point in time, it's not, yeah, it's, it's still not the same thing. So again, please uh, have a look. Try to use it, see what you think about it. Our objective is to make sure that when you do receive Lord Carter information, there is this underlying level of drill down that sort of opens the black box and says, well, the way this was calculated is X, 
and then you can kind of drive it down to procedure level, diagnostic level, and so on and so forth. So just to go back to functional benchmarking, we'll present the results, uh, and you can see what has been done, uh, what we've managed to achieve, and what we've sort of managed to get out of it so far. So the latest version of the dashboard includes information from 22 NHS trusts. Some of them participated in the original pilot work. Some of them submitted information at the later stage. But one way or the other, the current dashboard contains information from 22 organizations. So they all have gone through the process of taking the general ledger and mapping it to a grid and defined list of what we call cost areas, cost output, or what otherwise known as cost resources, so resources and activities. We can all see significant variances. You've all seen the presentation and we've been sort of kind about it. He'd picked up pharmacy, he could have picked up some other cost areas where the graph looks like a sort of the result of a battle. Um, what it indicates to us is that there is still work to be done to align the things together. Don't get me wrong, one thing we've discovered from working with the pilot group, and Alan will remember heated discussions, some of these variances are a subject of definition, as Jeremy correctly pointed out. Simply understanding what do we mean when we use the word pharmacy? What do we mean when we use the word anesthetics? Do we include medical or don't we? Are we talking about consumable items or not, etc.? So some of it is subject to definition. Some of it is subject to how the ledger is structured. But some of it is basically subject to how we apply the mapping. And from our point of view, we believe that the variances are significant. We believe that if it's not corrected, it will distort the end result. Because if we map different things, we will apply activities in the different things. We will calculate cost in the different things. Which means at the end of the day, we're not going to be benchmarking the cost variances. We're going to be benchmarking mapping variances. So from our point of view, it's very important to continue with this project to make sure that we do align the results together and we do produce the same information. Now, what we don't want to do is, as Jeremy, who's just disappeared by the looks of it, ah, uh, as Jeremy pointed out, we don't want to do different types of mapping. So we'll do one mapping exercise for this and another mapping exercise for that. So the next collection of the process, the next collection of the functional benchmarking information will be based on the CTP definitions. What we want to avoid, I'm, a, a sort of happy-unhappy kind of combination. <laughs> what we want to avoid is the situation where it changes on a regular basis, and because the, the transformation process is still in the process, what we've decided to do is to delay it a little bit, give chance for the dust to settle, for the work to ro with roadmap partners to be in a reasonably complete stage, and then issue a new template later on when the definitions are more or less defined. So we're not asking the trust to do mapping twice. So therefore, from my point of view, I'm hoping that you will receive a new collection template over the next two months. Am I being sort of realistic here or not especially? Sorry, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, so within the transformation, just answering that for you all, really, it's just a, so we're, we're working, as I said, we're working closely with the, with the um, roadmap partners um, and, and, and will and with internally within itself. We're hoping that that's actually done by the end of June. Okay, so May, June, we'll have that concreted in place. Yeah. So therefore, what happens is we'll be able to, to do that. Super. Thank Thanks you. Wisdom. So from our point of view, once this, the dust settles, we'll reissue a new template. This is where, again, I can't emphasize enough. This is the exercise that isn't it doesn't require the costing process. This is the X stage one, mapping your general ledger to what's called costing ledger. So whether you're currently implementing the transformation in your costing process or not, whether you're currently using Plix software to do X, Y, and Z or not, it doesn't make any difference. It's an exercise that is done in basic Excel, where you download your ledger into Excel and you apply the definitions to the ledger to map your ledger to what is known in the transformation program as a costing ledger. We would encourage everybody to do this exercise. It doesn't matter whether you're planning to do the, the costing transformation implementation now or in the next 12 months or in the next 18 months. This exercise will enable you to achieve two main objectives. First of all, it will enable you to test the mapping process and to see whether you do or you don't understand the definitions, whether your ledger does or does not map to definitions correctly. It will enable you to pick up variances, both in terms of genuine cost variances, i.e. my ward is more expensive than the peer group, which is a very good result in the first place. It's good to know if you're more expensive than the peer group. 
and it will enable you to identify any mapping or understanding issues. Obviously, we will share the information with monitor team, sorry, with NHSI team, I keep on saying that, and it will give you some sort of view of quality assurance, etc., in terms of how the definitions are used nationally and what it means on a sort of on a broader scale. So the template will be released. It's not on the disk at the moment for the reason that I've just explained. It will be released in time for the next submission. And I sincerely hope for the next submission we'll receive more than 22 submissions from you. We obviously then publish the update in the next dashboard in September, October, and it kind of falls in line with your time scale and hopefully will help everybody to move on. Is everybody reasonably clear with the functional benchmarking? I just want to make sure that, so if, uh, I appreciate there is a question session at the end, but are we all reasonably clear with it? Because I actually had more questions over the past three months. Sorry, Kieran, yeah. And that's a very good question, and I don't have the immediate answer. Uh, Winston, from your point of view, do you think definitions for mental health will be ready in sort of in that time scale? Um, uh, simple answer, no. But um, <laughs> we're, we're doing. We're going to be in this next year working closely with creating. Um, so at the present time, the, the standards are called uh, the healthcare costing standards for England acute sector. So what happens is we'll be working through um, the healthcare costing standards mental health in the next year as part of the costing transformation program. So the thing is of that, we will also be doing a very similar thing again, which will be testing the resources, which is the superb work um, that we're doing in that space. And, and thank you for sharing that with us. Um, and the thing is there is that we also do need to test the activities again. I think that's a fair thing to do in mental health because, as you pointed out, <laughs> we don't have theatres. But I think there's going to be different costs, which are just as we'll put up on the slides, I think we are going to have different inputs, you know, the, the nursing input to that compared to what it is in the, normal, in the normal trust kind of thing. I think that is going to be different and it's worthwhile looking at it from a mental health perspective. Uh, one of the things we're also be going to be organising is workshops. We believe that it's a very, very effective way of doing this exercise, where instead of everybody sitting in the office sort of looking at the ledger and thinking, well, should it map here or should it map there, we'll be arranging a number of workshops. You will get communications from the team, from Mike, from Andrea. Uh, they're practical workshop. They are not sort of let's have a chat about it. They're pretty much bring your ledger, sit down, try to map it, and if you've got the questions, please ask. And then at the end, we can sort of put the data into the dashboard and say, well, what does the result look like? And you can immediately see where the variances are. So the workshops will be organized not at the moment, because obviously everybody is busy with reference costing around. So let's try to make sure that we can sort of at least to some degree keep our heads above water. But at the end, sort of after the reference costing round, we'll arrange a number of workshops where you can sort of, as I said, bring your ledger, sit down, have a look at the result and see how it actually maps. The dashboards for an analyzing functional benchmarking have been improved significantly. As Will mentioned, uh, we are very, very grateful to the pilot group because we received a lot of feedback in terms of, well, if you present the information in this way, it makes sense. If you present it in that way, it doesn't. So we've done a lot of development work on the front end. Um, so you will see sort of this type of analysis where you can immediately see where you are and how it compares with the rest of the group. So there are lots of new dashboards being created. So again, please uh, have a look at what we've done in version 14 in terms of how the information is analyzed and presented. So the disk that you're holding, I'm not going, you'll be pleased to know, I'm not going to read through all of this. Um, the disk that you're holding is the release 14, which includes a lot of different information. So it includes the main dashboard, it includes the functional benchmarking information, it includes various other uh, elements. It's more or less a standard disk, so there isn't much sort of been added to it. One of the things I would like to highlight, it includes a new collection template. The question was earlier on raised in terms of whether we're separating contracted out and non-contracted out. That's actually included into the new template, so I'll cover it a little bit in a minute. So from our point of view, I know the slides look scary, but I'll explain in a minute. From our point of view, uh, Tim mentioned earlier on um, the sort of the integration between Albatross and IMS and where the two companies are sort of, uh, sort of playing on each other's strengths and sort of starting to develop beyond sort of uh, the capabilities of each organization. 
One of the very important things, and this is to me is really a cornerstone of benchmarking. Benchmarking isn't about the software, or let's put it in a different way. It's not entirely about software. Software will enable you to get access to the information. So as a result, using benchmarking tool, using Plix tool, using various other tools, what you will be able to do is get access to a certain type of data. And as Alan correctly pointed out, at the moment, NHS got access to a lot of data. So we can see performance information, we can see benchmarking information, we can see PLEX information, we can see activity information. What we can't do very easily is make sense of all of this information. Because first of all, there is a lot of data. The time and resources are limited in terms of how much time, resources, and money you can invest in analyzing the data. So what we end up with is lots of information, but not a lot of outputs from this information. Hence the scary picture. IMS got significant experience in analyzing and understanding large data. They've done it for pharma for many, many years. Ability to take very complex, very complicated, and, and, and very large data sets, apply sophisticated methods, statistical methods, scientific method in analyzing the data, and produce results that are actually actionable and deliverable. And from our point of view, what we're hoping to do is to apply all this knowledge and all this capability to the information that we currently know exists in the NHS and see if we apply the scientific methods that IMS developed, the statistical methods, the advanced uh, approach to data management, if we apply this method to the information that is currently collected, processed, and used by NHS organizations, can we develop something that will enable you to make sense, will enable you to understand where the variance is coming from, why the variance is there, what are the main triggering factors? So we started the project with UCLH. I can't emphasize the word started enough in this sentence. We've started the project with UCLH very, very recently to say, look, the trust got all this wealth of information, so you've got PLEX information and benchmarking and outcomes and various other information. Why don't we put this information together and see if we can apply these methods to the data and see whether we can deliver and produce actionable results? The project has just started, so the only thing I can promise is that we'll report at the next user group what the results are. It's entirely possible we will be able to present something really remarkable or not. I honestly don't know. It's the first attempt to do it. But I genuinely believe that this is the future of benchmarking. This is where benchmarking is going, because using a, a, a basic software tool will only take you that far. It's applying all the expertise to it. That's what takes you to the next step. And to me, that's a really important element of benchmarking. And this is where IMS got a lot of experience, a lot of expertise, and hopefully will produce some actionable results. And from our point of view, I'm, again, I'm not going to read through every single element of diagram. But from our point of view, what we're looking is sort of dimensions in terms of the main sort of activity information. We are looking at cost and activity measures. We are bringing all of this information together into a single pot. Benchmarking forms part of that information set, putting the information together and trying to make sense of it. That's the project that we've just started. Again, sort of lots of really, really complicated words, big data analysis, data sciences, advanced computing platforms. The basic of it, we're using advanced technology that individual NHS trust would simply not be able to implement, afford, or use. We're talking about the information that's used by data scientists, the type of technology that's used by data scientists, to see if we apply this advanced method to the data, would we be able to produce the results that deliver something tangible to you? Another new development, another thing that's from my point of view is very exciting, and again, it's something that is a result of sort of um, joint between Albatross and IMS. To me, it's something that I'm really, really, I really think will be of great use to you, and I hope you will find it sort of a quite important element. What we are looking at is another segment of benchmarking. We are looking at uh, benchmarking which is focused on drugs utilization. Now, again, can't emphasize the word utilization enough. Not drugs. We're not trying to produce something that will analyze the cost of drugs. 
First of all, it has been done. Secondly, there are enough companies out there that will show you what this drug costs in this, this or that company. That's not what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve is used matched pharmacy data, i.e. the drugs information linked to patient episodes and events, as you can see in that diagram. So the idea behind it is to understand where do we use different drugs? What type of conditions, diagnosis, procedures, age, demographics, and so on and so forth, triggers use of a particular type of drugs? And based on this, compare the results. So using this drug corresponds to a particular length of stay, particular type of recovery, particular readmission rate, particular overall cost to try to draw a parallel between the drugs used in patient treatments and the cost of this treatment and the results of this treatment. So from our point of view, again, we're trying to focus on drugs usage, not drug costs specifically. I don't believe it has been done. I believe it's a first attempt. And from our point of view, this is where it's going to produce results that have not been seen before. And I'm hoping it will create discussions with clinicians in terms of which types of drugs are they using, should they be using this drug, why their peers in a different organization use different types of drug to treat the same type of conditions. So we're currently collecting this data. We already collected the data from St. George's and North Middlesex. I am visiting the two other trusts that are participating in the pilot shortly to collect this information. We are hoping to have the first draft dashboards for the next user group. I don't think we'll be able to produce a lot of analytical results because we simply don't have enough time. But we're hoping to present the next set of dashboards at the next user group to show you this, this is the type of information you can produce, this is the type of analysis you can produce, this is what it's going to look like. We are also planning, again, not, not planning to do anything out of the box. Subject to agreement of the group, we're also planning to run this project in cooperation with pharmaceutical companies because obviously they would be interested to have their contribution into the process, their an analysis into the process. So from our point of view, you will see the first draft at the next user group. You will see what it looks like. Obviously, we'll take a steer from the pilot group. We'll take a steer from you to see whether we are on the right track or not, whether it's useful or not, whether this is the type of information that can deliver some actual benefit to the organization or not. We're also planning to share the information with NICE because we believe that this type of data set will enable them to understand drug effectiveness, which is fundamentally what they're trying to achieve. So again, hopefully it will give them sort of a better data set to use than they've got at the moment and give them additional information that will help their work. So those are the two main developments that from our point of view we believe will be of great benefit, we believe will deliver results for you. And from our point of view, that's the sort of the um, cooperation between Albatross and IMS. This is where it's all coming together. We've done quite a lot in terms of uh, service improvements. So we received a lot of feedback from you. Again, I'll, I'm not going to read all the text, but we received a lot of feedback from you. So we've done additional sort of improvements to the uh, benchmarking service that we've delivered. You will receive regular reports from us, just like you've received before, where we help you to produce analysis based on the information that you've supplied to us. We've done some modifications. It will be delivered in the PowerPoint formats. We're going to be arranging WebEx sessions. The idea is very simple, to promote the use of the information and the system as much as possible. We want you to use the data. We want to, to make a good use of the data. So anything we can help you with, please let us know. Right, um, this is the slide that Mike Hamilton kindly put for me. So again, a lot of information in there. I'm not going to read all of it. But the basic principle behind it is what we're trying to achieve is to promote engagement as much as possible. So most of you would have received communications from Mike. If you haven't, you will receive it shortly. The idea is to try to promote cooperation, to try to promote working jointly, using the information to understand the differences, to understand the best practice. There are a number of groups that have already been formed, two, three, four trusts, choosing to work together as a separate group, choosing to focus on a particular area of activities on our analysis. Mike is leading on this work. He is trying to make sure that there is a lot of collaboration. All I can say is I will encourage you to liaise with Mike, see what you can participate in, what sort of analysis you can produce, 
in simple terms, help us to help you. Benchmarking is not about the software, it's about this. Benchmarking is working together in the group to try to drive efficiency and results, and this is what we're trying to achieve here. The collection exercise for the next release. So first of all, the next release is very important. It's release 14.5, which is obviously the full financial year 15-16 uh, release. So obviously we are expecting majority of the users to submit the data. The new template has been produced, and again, guys, I don't know whether it's the final version of this collection template or whether there is one to follow. I'm not talking about transformation program, I'm talking about the standard Plix collection. We have an existing template, so obviously if you decide to make amendments, we'll take it from there. But for now, we believe we've got a template as you expect for the 1516 Plix collection. There are a number of additions to this template. Uh, there are some additional columns being requested, such as patient class, impairment, and steward contracted in, contracted out position. I think you've asked the question, or was it somebody, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. So contracted in, contracted out, which is an indicator whether the service is contracted out or not. It's not a huge modification. Literally, what we're talking about is a number of additional columns in the template. It's quite straightforward. We always, Albatross always delivers modifications or compliance issues with the latest collection process as part of the benchmarking service. So if your information colleagues or alternatively your software suppliers can modify the existing extraction process to make sure that you comply with the latest template, great. If you have any difficulties, any issues at all, you need our help in modifying the extraction process, please give us a call. Again, remember, it's part of the service that we deliver. It doesn't cost you anything additional. We'll be happy to visit you on site and tweak the export process to make sure that you're fully compliant with the latest collection requirements. The only thing I would ask is could you please give us notice if you need this visit because organizing things at the short notice two days before the release is a little bit problematic. So from our point of view, please contact Mike, contact Andrea, it doesn't matter, contact one of the teams, let them know if you need our assistance in modifying the, the, the extraction process, we'll be glad to come over and help you out. And finally, on the subject of the collection process, that's the proposed timetable. The word proposed is key in this. This is what we believe we should do because our objective here is to collect the data and release the new version, the 14.5 release, by mid-October. That's our plan. Again, from my point of view, some steer from the group, you're happy with this timetable, you're not happy. I'm expecting a hint from a Welsh user at the moment, telling me that this needs to be released a little bit later. Just before I do get this message, yes, the intention is the Welsh release will be a little bit later, because obviously your reference cost is a little bit later. Leaving the, the Welsh submission to one side, is everybody reasonably happy with this timetable? Can you submit the data on the scale? Does anybody see any problems? Wow, that's the first. <laughs> Okay, in which case, sorry? Uh, Patrick, I, I have to be honest with you, on the last five user groups, I'm yet to have one thing where I said, let's submit on this day, and somebody didn't raise a hand and said, let's not. Um, so I'm very, very pleased, actually. So that's the, the timetable. So obviously, from my point of view, again, the modifications to the submission process are very, very minor. If you need our help, please let us know, but please don't let us know on the 29th of August. It causes a problem with the resource management. Please give us a little bit of leeway to say, well, you know, we need to organize a visit. We'll be happy to do it, but just a little bit of notice will be really appreciated. So the plan is to produce the next release on the 13th of October, and obviously the, that will be the day of the next user group meeting where we're hoping to issue the next release. We're hoping to share the results of functional benchmarking where everybody would have submitted the data. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Uh, where we would be able to report on the results of what we've done UCLH. I don't know whether it will be a positive report or a negative one, but I'll promise you one. 
where we'll be able to hopefully show you the draft version of the pharmacy utilization or drugs utilization benchmarking. So we're planning to do quite a lot for the next user group. Uh, we're hoping to sort of to present quite a few new things and quite a few results. That's pretty much all from me.